Okay, so, first thing we're going to do, uh, because it's something that I forgot to do, we didn't really do the last time, partially because I just forgot about the system, is the destiny points, which you guys can spend for certain effects, but once you spend them... Okay, so there's two kinds. There, there's essentially white and black destiny points. A white one flips into a black, and a black one flips into a white. We have these little tiles so, that are white and uh, kind of orangish brown um, that we'll be representing it. But. So, it it's kind of meant to reference just, to some degrees, the flow of the force that's active in the world, even without, like, characters actively having force abilities. Um, so as you guys spend them, that you guys can spend white ones, they flip to a black. Then I can spend black ones to upgrade the difficulties of checks, uh, let sort of, you know, a whole variety of stuff like that. You guys can, and then they flip back. It goes back and forth. Um, I'll pull up what they do here in a moment. But in order to generate the pool of them, you three players each roll one force die, which is the white d12. Uh, on your various dice. One light side. Types. Two light side. Ooh. So, well, yeah, we'll just, I just got a bunch out, so we'll, we'll lay them out, and then the rest will just, the rest will go away. More or less. Defined the, the dice roll. I got two. Oh, you find guys the yeah. Side. Yep. Okay. We've got your two, and then I got one, and Sklur got... Zero. He's a dark side. Oh, I gotta roll for it still? Uh, yeah, just one. Just you one wanna roll one, yeah. while you look for the... I think that it. So which one? The, the white force white? Star. Is there not a white force diamond? Do I not have one? There is not. Well, they get rare... You may never roll another no. one. No. Uh, unless, you be, uh, unless you're force sensitive, so... And roll... One dark side. One dark side. So I just okay. just put it out here. Yeah. We um, can all use them. And then just hand me the, the rest of them. <coughs> and cool. break your mouse. Right. So obviously the uh, so don't pure we... force. Um, when like when building those dice pools, like or that that destiny point pool in the future, the more symbols that you guys have, the more points that are available to use. They're just like. Um, uh, just keep in mind that when you use one, it then sort of makes it available for me to use one. And this, uh, we can like just use like the easiest thing to do is to use one of these to upgrade like a green to a to a yellow, yep. right? That's like the main thing we can do for it to help ourselves with our normal non-force. And abilities. I may and I may do the same thing, spending a dark side point to up an NPC's dice pool, um, or I can use it to upgrade the difficulty. You points. can use it to upgrade the difficulty of checks. Against that this. NPCs are making, okay. uh, and I can use it to upgrade the difficulty of checks um, that you guys are making. Okay. Uh, essentially, what the way that works is, it doesn't upgrade the difficulty in terms of like take it from three purple d8s to four purple d8s. It turns one of those purple d8s into the red, like d12, d12 negative die. Which gives um, us the chance of critical failure. Yes. Uh, and there are some abilities and talents that require the use of destiny points as well. I don't think anybody has one of those at the moment. So that doesn't necessarily uh, matter. No one here is or ever will be force sensitive. So we don't have to worry about that. You don't know that. <laughs> Haas just turns around and starts like, Come on, come on, come one on. of these days. He's got his hand extended. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. He doesn't need I'm force choke. He just has actual <laughs> choke. Uh, force choke. <laughs> Strangles a guy. <laughs> um, yes, yeah, so you guys uh, spend some time bumming around, modifying equipment, healing up, yeah, uh, stuff like that, mm -hmm. which some of you sorely needed. Do we need to like go into um, more specifics on what we got, or are we just you can make... if you would like. I I, I I I think it's fine if you want to. Uh, if you if you if you want to explain stuff that you've gotten, I bought a couple that. gank uh, com link implants and stuck it in both your guys' brains so that we can silently communicate and inside of our some, brains with each other. Took some convincing. Took some convincing <laughs> yeah, things. but for some reason people didn't trust me when I very dryly said I need to put something inside of your brain. Trust me. Um, bought a couple stim packs, yeah. and we kind of. Um, 
I and Boxus switched over to using the heavy blasters that we had found, and he added he got a scope and attached that onto his. And I took yeah. some of the uh, laminate from the uh, purge trooper and made a check mm -hmm. to implement it into my own gear. And I was successful and have some laminate armor now. But also, if oh. somebody recognizes specifically what a purge trooper's armor looks like, they will recognize that I'm wearing pieces of purge trooper armor. So mm. that could get us in trouble. Don't yeah. worry about it. The the check was good enough that um, it was what like four or five. Successes it was five successes, but with, with a couple with threats. a couple threats. So. Yeah, the decision was essentially like, it doesn't. He did. He was able to modify it in the way he wanted. It does not look like Imperial armor anymore, and people aren't going to recognize it as Stormtrooper armor. If they recognize it at all, it will be as Purge Trooper armor. Um, so only if it's really bad for us, then people will know that I've done that. Right. Right. <laughs> it won't be normally yes. bad for you guys. It won't be <laughs> mildly bad for really us. Just bad. horrifically bad for us uh, in a few cases. Um. Only in a few. Okay. That's right. I guess we'll have to deal with it. Mm -hmm. um, it's all right. We could just have uh, we could just have Haas just bash people's heads and with the gaffy stick. Exactly. Yeah. That's true. Haas, hit him till he forgets. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Is, uh, any anything else you guys want to accomplish over these uh, like three days you have off, or uh, um, are you just kind of bumming around? We did some healing already. We kind of spent a little bit of money here and there to get some equipment. Uh, I got a shock glove. That's you right. Shock gloves. Yeah, you did get shock gloves. Um, what's that? So the shock gloves are they only stun? I think they are. Yeah. Okay. So cool. I mean, they might come in useful. It might be nice you're trying to not just like unhinge somebody's jaw and instead take them <laughs> prisoner or something. Like Where's that. the fun in that? <laughs> uh, yeah, we got a little XP at the end of the last one. Some people say it's spent. Some people are saving up. I don't think there's anything else. I, 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 sp I spent 20 XP. Nice. So. I didn't have any saved up before, but I saved all 15 that we got at the end of the last session. So, for for things. Um, things and stuff, stuff and things. We had to do some math to figure out. How some very worked. mild math just to figure out exactly <laughs> how that worked. But. Yeah. Um, okay, well, uh, as you guys are sort of expecting will happen sooner or later... Um, you are sent another message that uh, Orok would like to see you. I suppose we ought to not keep the slimy man waiting. I suppose. Let's go. Yeah, I guess. All right, let's, let's go. see Odd Lore the Hut. Orog the Hut? Hut Odd Lore? Or, or Orog Odd Lore. So it's. Or, you know, it's it's you can call him either way. Hmm. Um. Uh, Orog, Orog, how's it going? <laughs> hey. It's good to see you, man. Man, I tell you what, that that last mission you sent us on, man, it was real. Uh, uh, we were a little scared there for a second, but we got it done, man. Because you know what, we wanted to bring you that ship more than anything. <laughs> I'm never prepared for this. Can I shoot him, <laughs> <laughs> sir? <laughs> he gives you like a, a sort of rather long stare of just like. <laughs> not quite disbelief but it's sort of hinging on that of just like most people grovel at him at he's, his he's tried to, probably. you you <laughs> can <laughs> tell that he's not sure if you're being serious and that he's not sure if you're like <laughs> if you've got some scheme going on or something like he's like he's, like, he's kind of he's kind of got this like what's going on here look on his face for uh a moment um uh but he's just going to as usual, sort of jump straight into why he's called you all here. Um, you managed to prove yourselves pretty successfully on the Vares job. Um, against all odds, you managed to get the, the ship here. Um, the ship is still in, like, one of his landing bays. It's still that one and that, uh, like, cor like pro kind of prototype Corellian um, ship that he's been working on. Um, uh, and it looks like... Me the mechanics have been kind of swarming over the new ship to some degrees, um, but he, uh, um, so he's kind of mo he kind of motions to it when he's talking about the breast job. Um, he's got another job. He's got another job for you that's going to be a little different. There is still something you need to acquire here, which you're going to be have to be smart about how you go about this. There's a. 
uh, in, in the uh, the ever churning mire of politics and what families are in favor and out of favor, there is a family from the Core Worlds called the Vandrans. Quite wealthy, quite old family. Uh, sooner or later, any family falls out of favor for a decade or two, and uh, they tend to relocate to other estates before uh, sort of coming back into favor and returning. And the Vandrans have just fallen out of favor. Uh, he doesn't know what the story is. He doesn't care. He doesn't even know what the Vandrand family really does. Uh, but a contact of his turned up some information on them moving from Coruscant to another world in the core worlds where they have significant holdings. Okay. They're making this move aboard a luxury passenger liner called the Blue Star. The Blue Star takes several days to get anywhere it's going, partially because it drops out of hyperspace a couple different times in sort of uh, scenic touristy systems. Uh, and that's part of what makes the ship so popular. Core worlders. The Vandrin family is moving with essentially everything they have, which includes a rather expansive jewelry collection. He has a buyer for one piece in particular, a rather large green gemstone. He's arranged transport for you three to Coruscant and tickets, I mean, essentially the cheapest tickets available, on the Blue Star. But there is a hitch. Since this is a Core Worlder luxury flight, you can't just carry weapons and armor on board unless you're somebody of importance. And he gives you the uh, and you're not look <laughs> um, and so and tells you anything you don't want confiscated going through security, you're going to have to leave there at his palace, essentially. So once you get on board, you're going to have to find a way to get into the Vandrin's suites and snag this gemstone. There will be a ship, a shuttle. You're, you're, you're supposed to link up with a um, with a pilot named Taz Bando, who will be the 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 Blue Star is essentially like a capital ship. Is at least that size. It has a rather large hangar bay, and it often transports vehicles and ships. There will be a ship in the hangar that will be your escape vehicle and a pilot. This Taz Bando is the pilot, escape pilot. Okay. Hmm. I'm going to have to buy a suit. <laughs> uh, man, a so suit. You're telling me that I got to leave. Uh, yeah, a leave lot of the equipment that you guys were just like, let's modify all this armor and <laughs> use all these blasters. It's what, like, he's, what he's trying to them. say here is, despite all of this loot, I'm still just a gank in a suit. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, <laughs> yeah, I will. I mean, we have like a Chad. Like, we have like this like handsome superstar like athlete. He'll probably fit in as himself. Okay. And then mm-hmm. you, okay, you're like a, a personal athlete. trainer because you're like a buff Nautilin, and I'm what like a bodyguard or something. I'm like a gank. Buff, buff, buff is a buff is a strong term. <laughs> Physically, you're you're, you're like athletic. You're athletic. Yeah, yeah. He's got a swimmer. <laughs> I'm the bookie. Will Haas be recognizable from his athletic days? In the core world, more so, right? We'll find out. We might be. I mean, that is a good reason for why we would be able to afford this trip. If, like, you're a personal trainer, I'm a bookie, and we're going on, like, a luxury cruise with a a kind of former great athlete. It's still a great athlete. No offense, Haas. But (laughs) (laughs) that's why we can't afford the good tickets, because you haven't played as recently. I mean, if I former great athlete, even if nobody recognizes me, I can make sure people recognize me. <laughs> I <laughs> by the by the end of the flight, know they'll know him. Know. They'll know his name. They'll know his face. <laughs> we'll All of us. They'll know us very well. <laughs> oh God. 
Um, so that is I'm it. still just a gank in a suit. <laughs> <laughs> <Damn>. <laughs> oh man, I. I'm going to have to ask if Kasuga puts that in the description of this video. <laughs> Where Erickson learns that despite all this loot, he's, he's still, still just a gank in a suit. <laughs> <laughs> there's something about there's something about Jerry not being on camera when he just like when he's just giggling about the gank in a suit. <laughs> um, so yeah, he uh, so I guess that's part of what you guys are deciding now is what equipment you're leaving behind. And uh, would, would I be able to sneak my vibro knife on with me. It's gonna be. Think of it like airport security, Jerry. Uh, okay. Right, like you'll, you're I'm gonna be going everything. through. You're gonna be like going through scanners and stuff like that. Uh, it looks like I'm leaving everything. I'm gonna. I'm gonna try and take my brass knuckles. That's it. And a suit. You can take I mean, your let's go suit though. shopping, right? I mean, we gotta go suit shopping. shopping. Let's go to the right. finest Tatooine suit depot uh, we can find. Hey, rentals. 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 Let's rentals. see here. That's right. Uh, rule <sighs> supplements. There is totally. I believe Diplomat might have. I'm sure it has like suits. nice, and that probably gives like charisma bonuses if it's it nice would, clothing. It would not surprise me. Like oh, some sort of boost oh, to that kind of boost. Charisma. Just what you need. <laughs> Ah, smooth talk bonus, you say. <laughs> we need to find our way into their suite. I'd like to I smuggle this frag I grenade. I them to just give me all the gems. <laughs> um. Let's see. There's uh, diplomat's robes of 400. Resplendent robes of 500. Performer's attire, 50. Which, performer's attire could essentially be anything. Nobles Regalia, 750. Flare Jacket, 1500, but I'm pretty sure that it's essentially a flashbang as a jacket. Because <laughs> it's designed, the way they describe it is like designed originally for literally flashy entrances. But then some people are like, you could use this for military. What's banal apparel? Uh, stealth equipment can render a person literally invisible to naked eye, but sometimes simply fading into the crowd offers a more elegant and effective solution. It just looks... It is, it is, it's literally clothes designed to look to as in. nondescript as possible. Okay. Um, Which for, much, let's see, that's, that's, that that's 25. I, I'd say for 50, you could get essentially the fancy version of that. Okay. Where it's like. This person you know, looks just like, wealthy enough to yes, belong it's here like, and it's, nothing yes, else. These look like everybody else's fancy clothes. All right, let's spend for the 50. 50. Okay. I don't know. It was <laughs> yeah. a guy in fancy clothes. He says on a luxury liner full of people. With fancy I think uh, I'm gonna do. I'll spend the fifty, and then I can at least bring my data pad with us and have that. Yes. And I, yes, I think that I do. Pad. I will like literally be kind of posing as kind of the bookie manager for him. Um, and then we have like manager, trainer, athlete, and kind of go with that as our reason for being there. I can see that. I mean, that's... I, yeah. It's worth saying, I'm going to have to, like, take my gear off, and I am an exceptionally ugly individual. Like, I mean, I, you could probably still wear... <laughs> like a helmet? Like the helmet and stuff like that. But, like, the, like, laminate armor... That's stand behind. Wouldn't, wouldn't, ...wouldn't fly, and, like, the, the weapons don't fly. It's also worth mentioning, or it's, it's, a, it's a question. You have a bag full of things that you don't... That you've wanted to keep close by since you guys got a hold of them. Mm -hmm. The holocrons. It's true. Are you leaving those behind or taking them with you? I don't know if we can take them with us safely. Do I even know about the holocrons? Yeah, I showed you guys both them. Yeah, okay. We didn't know could, what yeah, the, the yeah, holocrons. We, we you got, or we one of you guys figured them, out. I, one I, of you I had some that. background knowledge. Yeah. I had some um, background yeah, knowledge yeah, last time. That's robes are actually <laughs> pretty good statistically. <laughs> what if there's like gambling there you and, and we use like, them as dice? <laughs> and then a message comes up. <laughs> <It's like Euros. laughs> and then a Jedi sympathy, a sim Jedi sympathizer message comes up, and we all help get me. freaking murdered. Help me, Obi Wan Kenobi. <laughs> help, help me, Obi Wan. Our, our only hope. Um, do these so these fancy clothes? Do they have any stat boosts? Are they just gonna be? Pure? It's yeah. the the boost is that like. People trying to like pick you guys out of a crowd or identify you guys, it will upgrade the difficulty of that check. Okay. Um, 
like because like you guys are specifically buying clothes that are designed to blend into a fancy environment. Mm-hmm. Um, Upgrades the difficulty of spotting us because we just blend in so dang well. Um, so yeah, I think yep. I think that I I assume I have like a kind of like a garage lockup for my bike when I'm mm-hmm. not using it, and I think I just like put it in the sidecar and throw a backpack over them. <laughs> or, like, put them in the bottom of my backpack and put that in the sidecar and lock the garage up. Okay. Because I don't think we want that to come with us. Anything that we don't want confiscated, yeah. we should and, bring well, with and, us. And anything, anything you don't want confiscated, you can leave at. Would stim packs be something that, like, triggered concern? I assume some people probably carry them for health reasons. Like medical stuff? So, I mean, if you had a crate full of them, probably. I'm thinking like two. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> two one or two may not. Okay. Um, How right. likely is it that I would be able to... Uh, I want... I, part of me also wants to try and use my utility belt and have, like, a couple of mechanics tools with me. Um, but I feel like... To have enough mechanics tools to have them actually able to aid me in a mechanics check, it would be a pretty... It would be like, why is this guy bringing a bunch of wrenches on this boat? I mean, there uh, are... If they have a hangar bay that's moving vehicles and stuff like that, mm-hmm. you you imagine that like not necessarily everybody on this ship is probably like super highfalutin. Okay. I mean, it is to some degrees a luxury liner, but it is a passenger liner. Okay. Um, so there may... It's, it would sort of depend on the capacity in which you're trying to get aboard, I guess. Like, if you're in super fancy clothes, but you're I wearing think, a tool belt, that'd be weird. Yeah, I think that we want to keep the, the image, you know. Yeah. And as far as, like, computer hacking stuff, I still, I have, like, a, I have my sweet, uh, um, <laughs> Ethernet cable rat tail that just I can pull out any time and help hack with, so. Nice. <laughs> it's true, it is, it is it's hard baked in your brain, essentially. That's right. Yeah, I think I'm just, I mean, outside of the fancy clothes, I'm just going to have to leave a lot of my, everything behind, because I ain't going to be able to smuggle anything on. I'm going to have to have Jocelyn draw my character as, like, in these fancy <laughs> clothes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I hope she's starting with I don't know. I, yeah, I I, she she's, got all the, uh, she's got all the stuff for her, um, but I haven't heard anything yet. Um, but yeah, so you guys, I guess you guys are essentially just going in. More or less bare minimum, huh? Yeah, I don't think it's worth getting caught with a weapon. Like, I technically could have, like, a vibro knife, but I'm not going to be that useful with it anyways. And what I'm useful with is, like, blaster rifles. I don't (laughs) think those are going to be something I can keister and bring aboard with us very easily. (laughs) Question is... You can try a blaster pistol. (laughs) Did Did I account for my heavy clothing... On my soak. Oh uh, no. no, it doesn't look like it. Your soak should be four. I believe. Your bra is three. Because your bra is three. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'll keep it three then. Oh, because you're not Cause wearing. Because I'm, I'm not wearing my heavy clothing. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I need my to soak just that, went though. down too. <laughs> your soak just. You I just have just cut your, my soak you just, in half. You just have your soak. Um, okay. Uh, so I guess you guys are all ready to go then. Yeah. Um, I mean, Coruscant is. Coruscant. I don't know if any of your characters... I guess your character would have been there before. I don't know if either of your guys' characters have been there. I'm not nope. going to describe it because we've all seen Star Wars. Um, <laughs> it is an entire yeah. city filled with... Or an entire planet filled with city. Yes. I, um, I more or less am from Coruscant because... Maybe not from from, but the sport that I play right. yeah. is you spent some a time. Coruscant-based sport or whatever. Okay. Um, you went to college. You got the I went to, like, co- I went to Coruscant. <laughs> Coruscant, went to Coruscant. You went to see you. Uh, yeah, I went to see you. <laughs> well, so you, guys, you guys essentially arrive the night before um, uh, the Blue Star is um, scheduled to take off. I like the idea that we just went from Tatooine to Coruscant on this like express freaking light speed travel just to get on a different boat to go a different direction slowly. <laughs> Yes. If anyone uh, asks, we live here usually um, or something. So the next, early the next morning is the passenger cargo loading. Um, immediately, uh, immediately before, like essentially immediately before takeoff. Um, the Blue Star is, it's obvious from the outside that this is like built as a like fancy luxury vessel. It does not look like a military vessel in any capacity. Um, 
at least you two guys, having spent a decent amount of time recently on like Tatooine and stuff, have probably never seen a ship like this clean. Um, What's the point of cleaning a there's ship? No, there's no scratches. Um, lots of What's windows. Um, and it looks... If it if it was armed, it would be a capital ship. It's it is quite large, hmm. um, and it, um, God, what's the purpose of keeping a ship so nice and clean? We're just it's just gonna get messed up anyway. <laughs> as soon as somebody shoots that, like <laughs> you're gonna be Don't, able to see that. I mean, they're one crash landing away from just really undoing a lot of hard work. Bunch of dummies. Yeah. Um, yeah. How, what the hell? Uh, so what? Um, uh, uh, yeah, I mean, so you guys can see, like, there's, like, the security lines. Um, they, they are, like, passing people through scanners to get on board. Um, except for the, like, very much the, like, you're somebody, or you've paid to be somebody. Um, you do see both, um, what seems to be, like, ship security personnel, uh, armed primarily with, um, like, light blaster pistols or regular blaster pistols, and a lot of, um, private security as well um especially around sort of some uh some people and individuals who also seem to quite a few of them to be armed so so our yeah. our attempt to get in here is that i'm an athlete you guys are my i mean we have tickets so we're gonna get on oh yeah this but is to get into the vip yeah, the, yeah this yeah. is just so that we look like so we feel it feels like we belong yeah and i like that like we, we have a we have a plan for if somebody asks us who we are. Or, exactly. You know, what like we do. We're we're the Hoss and his uh, and his entourage. Yeah. And I love that <laughs> my character. He's a gank, so he's in like a nice kind of like it's kind of like a corporate suit, <laughs> right. Sort of a thing. It's like looks like a kind of businessman suit, but then there's like kind of furry clawed hands coming out of the end of the sleeves, and he's got like a still like a kind of spacer helmet over his head, and like all this wiring and cording going up the side and back. It's a very interesting dressiness. Uh, Do you just like rip the sleeves off of a blazer? <laughs> <laughs> no, he's, wearing a, he's wearing a sweater vest and only a sweater vest. <laughs> I, just, I, just, like, I just picture like a full suit but with the blazer's sleeves ripped off. Uh, I ain't getting my deposit back from these. <laughs> um, are you, you, you said, are you trying to take brass knuckles on board? Okay. Um, unless you have a clever plan for hiding those, they will like detect them with uh, like as you're going through the scanner. Sorry. Okay. Okay. So they'll confiscate them. Does that? Maybe I'll try to talk my way out of it. You can. I mean, you can try, but like, there's not. There's not really. I mean, you can try, but it's. I'm going to make it. I'm going to make it a daunting, okay, a daunting check, which is the four difficulty. Oh, okay. okay. Well, I got basically. Just, I just a question. Okay. Does streetwise, streetwise, that's pick, that's lock picking. No, that's that's that skullduggery. Skullduggery is like lock picking and pickpocketing. Skullduggery. Skullduggery. And pickpocketing. Yeah. Okay. Streetwise is like All is right. kind of a knowledge check. It's not under okay, knowledge. Okay, so. But... So once I get past the scanners, I want to try and like bump into a security guard and pickpocket his blaster. Jesus Christ. Immediately grab okay. a gun. We don't need a gun yet. We don't need a gun yet, guys. <laughs> it's okay, guys. I got us a gun. We don't need a gun. <laughs> Literally, we're trying to blend in still. Let's just okay. let's slow that down. That will, right. You murderers. All right, don't, do, do what you're going to do. Do what you're going to do. Just... That will be a hard check. And yours is still so going to be a daunting check. Yeah, so three. Okay. Good lord. <laughs> Wait, well, they so both what? get they both get thrown in prison, and you're just like, yes, I'll try and <laughs> what? do this myself. What am I checking here? Um, uh, I assume it's a persuasion, right? You're, yeah. You're ready to hear? <laughs> yeah. I'm you're ready to hear. Three success. Hey! <laughs> Also, do you, have, do you, you? How many ranks do you have in skullduggery? Zero. You just have it's three. Dice. I guess he just three has three. high. He just has high agility. Yeah. Basically, well, skullduggery is cunning, not agility. Oh, cunning. Yeah. 
Basically, yeah, what I'm doing here is I, have to I'm saying first. you wouldn't take the trophy away from a champ, would you? Oh. <laughs> It's your, it's your, it's your championship, it's championship ring. ring. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm trying to do. Okay, you know what? Right, Downgrade that, that to a hard. Downgrade okay. that to a hard. That is hilarious. <laughs> You're not going to take a champion's rings away. Come on, man. That, that is funny. Uh, okay. You know what? You. Oh my God. Somehow players will just never stop surprising you. <laughs> I don't think, you only, I don't think that was right. Was that not right? You're. Presence is three, and you have a rank in it, don't you? You're looking at perception. Oh. You want negotiation. I want negotiation. Yeah, negotiation. I think you're reading that as persuasion. So it's you have oh. one yellow and two and two greens, not just two greens. Okay. So you tie the yellow because you have the rank. Okay. That's <laughs> yeah, I did have one success. You did. Right? <laughs> <laughs> this time it'll be a failure since I let you add extra dice. Yeah. Well, that was worse. <laughs> <laughs> you bastard. <laughs> I call it. I want to use a perception check. <laughs> No, I'll um, take it. I'll take it. I'll take it. Uh, <laughs> I get this is a point. This is a place to point out destiny points as well. Oh, yeah. If if we want to upgrade um, the chance of you succeeding at that. Yeah. Um, really, if I was smart, I would have tried to just be take the big one too. But, you um, failed, but with advantages. So they are. Uh, so they are going to confiscate your breast knuckles. Because it's obviously, they're like, these are fucking breast knuckles. But, <laughs> but, but the guy was like, I like this guy enough that I'm not going, I'm, I think that this guy might actually be an athlete. I'm not going to, like, say anything about it to anybody. So they, will, they are going to take your breast knuckles, but there's no, like, they don't flag you for security or, like, okay. say it to anybody. <laughs> The guy just got a good laugh out of your comment. What, what would you like have done with the with the one success and two threats? Um, I mean, you would have gotten the brass knuckles, but I'm not entirely sure what the threats would have been. Uh, Maybe yeah. like the security keeps a closer eye on you. Yeah, or something yeah. like that. that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he. I mean, he passes his word along to somebody about a like. I think this guy might have brass knuckles. They might be championship rigs, but they might also just be brass knuckles. <laughs> Take a chance. The rings are late. Come on. Come on. Um, well, you guys are... Uh, I don't think there's anything else you guys were trying to smuggle, so you guys are through security. So he, Wait, did, uh, he, did he slip someone's so, blaster? So I got, okay. So, so I have a blaster, and I tuck it, like... In, Behind me and cover it with the jacket. Trying to shoot his bollocks off. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess his buttocks off? What's, what's, what's this time he's blowing your bollocks off every time you sit down? <laughs> <laughs> what's, what's that? That's why I stand. It's me belt touch. <laughs> You've got a gun in your trousers. Well, is I'm sure that'll come in handy, but God, you guys are just a bunch of freaking monsters. It's just like, <laughs> we haven't even gotten, we haven't even crossed the bridge onto this freaking bow yet. And you're already like, how do I have something in my hands to kill somebody? <laughs> <laughs> what do I need to do to be able to murder? <laughs> I'd have some in my hands listen, to kill somebody. Listen. My hands. My hands. <laughs> For I real, have, though. I, I, I have one thing to say to you. And it's that guns are my religion. <laughs> You're not even a real Mandalorian. The only real Mandalorian that's been in this campaign so far got shot to death. That's true. They're my um, religion. <laughs> so you guys are allowed. You guys are allowed on the ships. Um, Your uh, obviously your tickets take you to rooms. Do we have like each separate rooms? Yes, they're they're small, but okay. you will each have like three adjacent small rooms. Um... Just being on board, you will be sort of immediately given access to a couple of things. Um, it's obvious that the hangar bay is kind of more to the rear of the ship. And it's obvious from the structure of the ship that most of the, like, especially expensive suites are near the front of the ship. Um, meaning there's, like, and this is a very, very large ship, so there is a very long distance between the thing you need to steal and your escape vehicle. Of course. Um... And uh, you are also given essentially a schedule. So right now is passenger cargo loading, then will be takeoff, obviously. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, they will spend most of the day in hyperspace, and then that night they will drop out of hi- hyperspace. Uh, there will be a, there will be it's essentially something of a party. They do a party both nights. Um, there is a, there is sort of a like 
there is like a lounge, casino, bar, and restaurant all sort of area kind okay. of in the center of the ship where like a, a lot of this big party will take place. Uh, day two, most of it we spent in hyperspace, but that evening is the sort of main gala event of this flight. Um, it's, it's kind of their big showboat event for like, uh, uh, you know, of, of the like sites that they show off. Um, and that's sort of like the, that's sort of the big fancy expensive party of the, uh, um, of the event day three, we will spend most of the day in hyperspace and that's also the day that you guys will arrive, um, or that the ship will arrive at its destination. Uh, and, um, Orog would have told you guys to obviously to looking for Taz Bando. Also, um, a ship called the Flare um, should be your escape vehicle. Okay. But you guys have, I mean, you guys essentially, you know, have the run of the ship to some degree. So, like, you guys are, you can move around freely. Well, I know a couple things I want to do. Uh, I think that you should probably start <laughs> ingraining yourself in the social culture of this ship. <laughs> Go start smooth talking, people. Can do. Can do. <laughs> um, uh, what are you thinking, Boxes? Uh, I'm, I'm thinking I'm gonna go find. I'm gonna go meet up with Bondo. Bond, Bondo. Yeah, Bondo. Taz Bondo. Bondo. Yeah. Taz I'm gonna go meet up with him and see the shit. Uh, Bondo. James O. Bondo. James O. <laughs> you know, kind of get the lay of, and I'm making fun of my own names now. Dang it. Yeah, okay. <laughs> you can definitely go to that. I'd like to kind of wander the ground. Is there like computer terminals that seem like security terminals or things that like staff seem to be interacting with? I basically want to plug my rat tail <laughs> into a box somewhere and try and get like crew, like ship manifest, crew, or like a. At least try and figure out which room this family is in. I assume it's one of the most front ones. Okay, you can plug in if you want, but it's just going to be a power outlet. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, <laughs> <laughs> um, that'll be a, like a perception check to, to find uh, that type of terminal. Okay. Um, How hard? Average. Okay. Because it, it, it's not all that hard to just like... I mean, it's just knowing enough about ship systems and stuff to like know what to keep an eye out for and keep an eye on the staff. So, um... One failure, one advantage, one triumph? S right. Jeez. So, I'm going to have to go back and look at the triumphs thing to, so we can figure out what we so do. So, I, I fail with, an, like, it was, the the triumph counts as one success, which counteracts one of those failures I wrote. Right. So, it is but still a failure. But it is still a failure. But, but with a triumph, a triumph and an advantage. Let's see if there's a, if they have any good advice on stuff to send triumphs. Unexpected boon or significantly beneficial effect related to the task. Unexpected boon or significantly beneficial effect related to the task. So, you fail at finding any good, computer, terminal, computer, computer, good computer, computer terminal to access. The advantage is you don't seem to be drawing any attention really at all. There's partially, it seems like there's just too much activity going on. Mm -hmm. Um... Uh, everybody moving around. Um, but you also just seem to be doing a good job of just not Nonchalant. looking suspicious. Yeah. Um, I suppose the triumph is you hear somebody address somebody by the name of Vandrin. You know, it, you know, sort of a, like, right this way, Mr. Vandrin, or that type of thing. Okay. And you can see a, like, group of people with private security moving towards the front of the ship. So you succeed... Not in the thing you were trying to do. That's the failure. The triumph is... I you happen to just run into the guy you were looking I would like to try and uh, quietly follow where they go to see where they end up. At. Okay. I mean, in the in the, in the the like sort of chaos of this ship, you should be able to do that. Okay. Um, where they end up is in the, like, the fanciest suites in the, like, front of the ship. They seem to have... It's 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 essentially four suites around a like little lobby almost. Okay. So there's like sort of a central set of rooms and four suites off of that. Okay. Um, there's nine of them, I believe. Nine people uh, in the not including security. Not including security. Um, 
Can I try and make like Total a knowledge roll on the family's name to see what I know of them? Yeah, I mean that's gonna be, be like a, a, that'll be a hard check. Okay, but, so three uh, three perps. Yep. Um, how are either of you guys going about your? I. What's it? I just kind of meandering away towards the front. Just, just moving for, more towards the front right. of the ship. I don't know really what I find. Just keep going. Um, around the, around the sort of midpoint of the ship, you will run into the like. The barrier. Well, no, the like lounge, mm-hmm. uh, lounge, bar, restaurant, casino sort of area. Um, this big sort of social deck. Um, okay. You know, like huge huge windows and stuff like that. Um, there are already quite a few people here. Um, uh, and f- sort of ahead of that deck are the, like, sort of upper-class cabins. Um, so you can keep going forward into the upper-class cabins if you want, or you can uh, cruise around there. Uh, let's stick around for a little bit. And just go get a drink and chat around. Okay. Yeah, just make me a... Just make me a... Um, Negotiation. It will be short. A cool. Just yeah, just probably a general negotiation. Just I guess to see how well, how well you're being received by all the people you're. Uh, it'll just be uh, just easy. Uh, oh, just one. Yeah. Okay. Just see kind of how well you're being received by everybody. Two successes, one try. Um, people, people like it. Like usual, it does <laughs> not take you long to kind of become uh, <laughs> the life of the party. Seems like you're already making friends, and people seem to be excited about the idea of spending, you know, several days on board this ship with a famous athlete. with this like with this famous athlete. And you do run into quite a few people who have heard of you or who used to watch you play, stuff like that. I got one success on knowing about this family. Um, they're not especially impressive, um, and part of it's also just like as you're kind of watching this. Like, you know that, like, like well, I guess, you, so you know that they have three children. They're all, like, adult age. Um, two daughters and a son. Um, the eldest daughter's married. Uh, you, you're you like, you're like, that's eh, probably her, and that's probably her husband. Um, their son is married and has a couple kids. Those are probably the kids. Mm-hmm. Um, those little ones, I think those might be the children. I think human, <laughs> I think human children are small adults. <laughs> so those are probably the human children. Um... And then their <laughs> youngest daughter um, is uh, appears to be here by herself. Um, are they no, like are they wealthy for a specific reason? Um, are they like it's politicians? Prob- n- they're not politicians. It's probably it's probably holdings in a company or um, some sort of merchantile, mm-hmm. merchantile stuff or industrial okay. or, um, supply or something. Okay, um, they. they um, you don't think they're politicians from what you can remember. All right. They obviously sort of view themselves as royalty. You're getting that impression as you're just they're like... They're pretty haughty. At least most of them are. Uh, um, the youngest one seems... Uh, the youngest daughter seems fairly quiet, but um, the parents are obviously pretty, like, haughty. Uh, I think that is a good word to use. Um, <laughs> haughty. Uh, how are you going about finding Taz Bando there, Jerry? Uh, well, as I'm walking back to the, uh, You really ship, gotta stop um, kicking uh, that tub of pretzels. I'm coming out of my mouth. Uh, sorry, what was that joke? Uh, as I'm walking back to, the, as I'm walking all the way to the back of the ship to get to the bay, I'm also kind of looking around to see, uh, trying to see if there's, like, any ways, like, any corners or routes we could take if things go bad and we have to make a quick or try to evade security, stuff like that. Roll me a perception check. Perception? Yeah, do just do uh, an average one, but like, failures don't necessarily mean you'll learn nothing, it's just sort of like, it's just sort of how much you're going to learn here. Okay, uh, is it just two purple die or just one? Just two. Very interesting. Two failures and three advantages. Um, uh, hmm. 
As far as like corners and routes and stuff like that, you don't see much. Um, okay. Yeah, a lot of the hallways are very straight. I mean, there are doors and stuff like that, and like doorways and branching hallways. Um, uh-huh. But like, sort of the main hall that like hallway that leads to the hangar bay is um, pretty just kind of straight down the line. But you you right. do see um, occasionally uh, stuff that looks like um, mechanics access like mechanics like access ways, um, like either in the floor or um, like in the ceiling. All right. Yeah. So, um, yeah, and I guess as a as also in terms of, in, like in turn of looking for the those kinds of things. I guess just keeping an eye out on people I pass by, just gate, you know, just seeing if anybody pops out that, okay. or stands out that probably shouldn't be there. Um, I mean, the farther you get, like the closer you get towards the hangar bay, the sort of um, rougher the people become, if that makes sense. Uh, yeah. They see you. You you see you see a lot more sort of mechanics and pilots and stuff like that. Um, the closer you get to the hangar bay. Um, you know, rather than um, the sort of richer clientele up front. You do still see quite a few security guards, um, even down here. Uh, um, but yeah, you, th- there's nobody like um, a, that especially stands out. Um, there's not like okay. an inquisitor standing at the end of the hallway or anything like that. I wasn't expecting that, but... <laughs> but now I am. <laughs> oh, you know. But now I know there's one around here somewhere. Why'd you mention <laughs> Yeah, why'd you mention it now? That now I'm nervous. <laughs> now I, I just go all the way back, try to find uh, find Brando now. Okay, it's a um, it's a it's a big hangar bay. How do you want to go about? How do you want to go about trying to find uh, trying Boy. to find Taz? <laughs> Boy. Boy. Can I use a pers- well? No, because I don't know. What was the name of his ship? The flare that we were looking for, the flare. Uh, I guess I could also just ask ask people who are in the hangar bay hangar if they've seen Brando. Just kind of ask around, see if I can if somebody will is it Brando talk with or me. Bondo? I mean, is split it, the difference. There's no it, R, but. <laughs> Is it James it, it's, it, it's not James. It's not James Obondo. <laughs> <laughs> it's Bondo. James. James it's, 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 it's Bando. I heard Brando. I was it, like, it's okay, it's Taz. It's Taz Bando. Bando. But, yeah, yeah. James, Bando. James Obondo is really funny. Um, Barack um, Obondo. <laughs> um, here's here's where. Uh, a streetwise would probably be fine, or um, all right. Uh, I guess investigation isn't really a skill, is it? Um, uh, I'll do a streetwise. See, uh, what's the difficulty on the streetwise? Um, two. Yeah, we'll do two. It's not like a special one advantage. advantage. One advantage. Um. Yeah. Well, after like walking around and after, like after kind of walking around talking to people, um. Looking for the ship and stuff. Uh, you've become firmly convinced that there is no ship in this hangar called the Flare. But somebody does think they... Somebody does think they heard the name Taz Bando or, like... Either heard somebody call that or, or heard somebody introduce themselves like that or something and they kind of point you towards one end of the hangar bay. Alright, I'll just follow where they directed me okay. see if i can find him um I, there's quite a few ships here there's um there's some pretty fancy ones probably not us um there's one yeah that's, uh, not, that's not us there's one um it's a, it's kind of a shuttle in size it doesn't seem like it's not impressively it is not uh, uh, especially big um that somebody seems to be like more or less tearing into the engine of um there's like parts and tools kind of scattered everywhere, um, and there's like a lot of um, land vehicles and speeders and stuff here as well. So 
I walk up to the guy who's tearing into the engine. Okay. And just ask, and just be like, Bando? Taz Bando? Um, you, this person did not seem to hear you coming, so you nearly scare them off of the engine that they're working on, which is like <laughs> a decent ways above your head. <laughs> um, it is a, it is a female Doug. Uh, who like who like immediately like almost <laughs> throws like there, sir. <laughs> Whoa, what? Like she said, like turning around, like, using her like, legs like kind of immediately hands. like almost like kind of does the like like accidentally throws a wrench in the air and then struggles to catch it, juggles it for a second, and almost falls off the ship. Um, uh, yeah, that seems like our pilot. <laughs> <laughs> our dogs? Is that which one? Are, which one's dog? Um, uh, that's what um... the. Uh, <laughs> Is that bad guy pod racer? Yeah, Sabulba. Sabulba. Okay, yeah, I was making sure. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sabulba. <laughs> uh, she, she will clamber down off the engine and introduce herself as Taz Bando. And uh, extends yeah. a uh, foot, uh, a hand? You're not sure. <laughs> <laughs> it comes out uh, of the bottom of her torso, but it has a hand on the end of it. Uh, sure, I'll shake it. <laughs> it's like... I, I, I'm the person you're supposed to beat. Oh, she, uh, <laughs> she's... one of the three people you're uh, I'm to... here to do crimes with you? <laughs> he says quite loudly in, a, in an echoey <laughs> hand Um, Taz seems to immediately, yeah, you kind of immediately get, like, kind of conspiratorial, like, you know, like, you're doing the, like, it's like, like, the, like, like, come here, we'll whisper secretly, uh, sort of hand motion. Um, uh... She sort of gives you a rush of information very fast. Uh, oh, partially fine. about how um, uh, this is obviously not her ship. Her ship was too well armed to be allowed on board um, since this ship has pretty high security. So she lifted a shuttle to do the work instead. Um, so she's been modifying the engines to maximize its straight line speed, which will be fine as long as you're not planning on making any sudden turns when they're actually, when you guys are actually escaping. Um, but it is hyperdrive capable. Well, this thing uh, <laughs> That won't catch okay, us. That's what I was about to ask. Will we <laughs> um, be able to hit get into hyperdrive hyperspace yes. if we need uh, to? It does have a, it does have a hyperdrive. Um, she's been sort of asking around and doing some scouting work while she's been here, and she's learned a few different things. Um, first off, uh, you've probably seen the security is relatively tight. Um, yeah. Uh, both private security and ship security. Um, the biggest problem with that is the fact that obviously you guys can't escape from the hangar during while the liner is in hyperspace. Um, uh-huh. That just physically does not work. <laughs> uh, so, like, you will essentially only have two windows to make your escape. The first night, like the party of the first night when they drop out of hyperspace, or the main gala event the second night. The other problem with that is that the hangar, like the blast doors on the hangar are closed. Somebody is going to have to get into the hangar control room, which she points out, um, like the, like the, the control room for, for the hangar. Somebody's going to have to get in there and open the doors and hopefully you guys all get out of the hangar before somebody else shuts them again. Um, if you bring that to my attention, I might be able to... But she does, um, she has landed this shuttle in a way that it's already pointed at the hangar doors. So, um, it will be a pretty quick flight straight out once the hangar doors are open. Um, how long, how long till this engine is done? She'll have it done probably, she'll, she'll have it done well before the party at the end of the day. Um, it really depends on like when you guys... Uh, um, want to move um, and obviously like as far as she can tell because um, she's managed to figure out which of the ships here is belongs to the Vandron family um, as far as she can tell like the valuables and stuff that they have are probably up in their suite like there's probably some stuff on the shuttle but like whatever it is you guys are after probably isn't in the ship in the hangar bay, it's probably in a safe or something on the uh, in their suites. Okay. All right. Well, I uh, I pretty much say I'll let you get back to work on the engine. I need to go 
me with my associates. She'll give you the sort of, like, conspiratorial, like, nod, wink, salute. Like, you know what I mean? Like, oh, like yes. we're, yes, we're just, we're just a couple of normal people chatting, nod, and wink, and, like, <laughs> like, Very like backstep walk. A uh, couple and, of expert uh, skullduggery <laughs> folks right there. I just, I just... I just shake my head Skull and walk away, like, Skull and you know, just see what happens. Skullduggers. <laughs> Skullduggers. The Kansas City Skullduggers? <laughs> <laughs> Is that the, whatever, bocce ball team, whatever the sport <laughs> you, you play? Yeah, that's what I played for. Kansas City Skullduggers. Yeah, yeah. Hoff uh, uh, was a professional bocce ball player. <laughs> for the Kansas City uh, For those of you who don't know, also known as lawn bowling. <laughs> <laughs> I think it would be even my that you absolutely jacked to be good at that sport. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, if the, like, the whole point is to get as close as you can to that little white ball, right? Yeah. So you can like launch that thing like 300 yards. That's your, that's your strategy. You're the only person who's going to throw the big ball that's, even that's, remotely that's close to it because no one else can throw it. It's your turn to throw exactly. the ball. You huck the thing to the other end of a football field. <laughs> and then you're the only person with enough arm strength to get the other balls towards it. <laughs> Guaranteed points. Every time. It's, called, it's called strategy. Look it up. You have, um, to, you have to stand like a hundred yards back so you can actually make the dis so you don't overshoot the distance by like a long shot. 